It is an extremely challenging career, but I can guarantee that it is very rewarding at the end of it. If you are up for a challenge, then nursing, midwifery and healthcare generally is probably for you. It's very diverse. I can guarantee, again, no two days will ever be alike in healthcare and definitely not in nursing or midwifery. You think you are going into onto a shift expecting one thing, but then you arrive on shift and something completely different happens to you. It's a career for life. As I say, I've been a nurse for an awful long time and I've never regretted it. It's internationally recognised and more importantly, and for me in particular, I find nursing to be a privilege. If you think about it, when you are ill, the people you want looking after you are your loved ones. People who you love, who you trust, who you know love you. And for me, if somebody is in a vulnerable state in their lives and they've put their trust in me to do the best that I can for them and to help them get back onto the road of recovery, then I owe it to them to make sure that I do the very best that I can to help them. And that is a real privilege if people have allowed you into their lives at that stage in their lives. So, right at the very beginning now, the stage you are at, what you've got to decide is which career pathway is it you want. If it's nursing, you have four fields of nursing that you can choose from. Midwifery is a completely different programme. We'll talk about that one in a moment. But in terms of nursing, the starting point is which field of nursing do you want to go into? Think about the age group of the clients that you will be looking after. So, for example, adult nursing, you will be looking after the client groups anywhere from the age of 16 all the way up to 116. And the oldest gentleman in the world sadly passed away yesterday, and he was 116. As an adult nurse, you will be caring for adults across all stages of their lives where their health is compromised for some reason and they are vulnerable in some way and it is your duty as a nurse to try and help that individual to get back on track um, and to sort of lead a normal and independent life again as possible. As a children's nurse you will be working with children from the age of zero up to 16. It's not just children you will be looking after, it is the entire family and you need to be prepared for that because the majority of care that is delivered to children will be by the family and rightly so too. The other thing you need to consider with children's nursing is sometimes you will be looking after technically adults because there are many children's um, care environments where you will have children but actually they're in their 20s. The nature of the disease or the condition that they have means that they remain under the care of the children's services and so as a children's nurse you need to be prepared for looking after younger adults as well as children is that clear yeah okay what about mental health nursing mental health nursing is about looking after people some of whom will have the most challenging behavior that you can come across if you are really interested in helping those people to come to terms with their condition and try and help them to lead as normal a life as possible out in society, then mental health is probably an area of nursing that you might want to consider. As is learning disabilities nursing. Again, learning disabilities nursing is all about helping people who have a disability to live as independently in society as possible. And with your help, they can do that. It is a really rewarding career. And both of these programmes do span the whole age range. So you could well be looking after children who have a mental health condition or a learning disability. Equally, you could be looking after adults as well. What about midwifery? How many of you would like to be midwives? There's usually a fair few hands that go up at this stage and that's absolutely fantastic. However, if you want to be a midwife, please remember that it is not babies that you will be looking after. As a midwife, you are an accountable professional who works in partnership with women in order to give the necessary care and support that they need during the preconception stages, pregnancy, 
during um, labour and in the postpartum period, I would never have made a good midwife. I wouldn't have wanted to hand any of the babies over. I'd have kept them all for myself. So definitely think about midwifery. Midwifery is definitely about looking after women in their pregnancy stages. These are the programmes that we have offer on um, over at Edge Hill University and you will find that a lot of universities offer similar. So over at Edge Hill you can do all, field, all fields of nursing. We have adult nursing, children's nursing, mental health nursing and learning disabilities. We also have two new programmes that came into being two years ago and they are integrated awards. So you can do integrated children's nursing with social work and integrated learning disabilities with social work. You do come out at the end of that programme with two professional qualifications. You are a registered nurse in that field of nursing and a registered social worker. We offer midwifery and we offer a BSc honours in operating department practice. I'm mentioning that one because sometimes people think that when they qualify, what they'd like to do is work in an operating department as a nurse. You can do that. However, you don't have to be a nurse to work into, in an operating department. You can go straight into operating department practice right from the beginning of your degree. And operating department practitioners predominantly work in um, operating theatres, but they also work across the trusts. They usually work in places such as intensive care, coronary care, um, accident and emergency units, wherever patients are being supported with life support machinery, you will often find somebody who is operating department practice trained. We also offer a diploma programme in paramedic practice um, and that is the only diploma programme that we do offer at Edge Hill. So just a very quick overview of the pre-registration nursing and midwifery programmes. These are all the similarities that we have. Um, courses are all three years long and they all are timetabled for 45 weeks per year. The amount of um, information that we have to cover, the amount of knowledge and skills that we have to cover, means that this is a 45 week per year programme. Okay, it's the only way that we can actually get cover all of the material that we have to. All courses are 50% theory and 50% practice. And by and large, students are expected to attend 37 and a half hours in theory and 37 and a half hours in practice. Now, when you are in university, you will have some days that we call directed study day. So you might be in university for two days and then you might have some self-directed study that you need to do, which you can do at home. Yeah, you don't have to be in the university, but you will be guided by the tutors um, on the programme that um, the, at the university that you go to. However, when you are in practice, you will be expected to, to work 37 and a half hours and you will have to work shifts. So that does mean you have to work earlies, late, night duty, bank holiday, Christmas. No, we don't give, we are very kind. We do give students Christmas off. As a student nurse, you will get what we call generic modules and field specific modules. The idea being that when you qualify, you will come out as a fully rounded nurse with a great understanding of healthcare generally and how it applies to all client groups, but you will also have specific knowledge to your field of practice um, that you now wish to go into. You'll understand clearly what your role is as an, a nurse and you will also have the opportunity to work multi-professionally with other disciplines so that you get a picture, full picture of what other disciplines do, how they um, deliver care to patients and how you fit in to the wider picture of care that needs to be delivered. The course is structured just very briefly so that in year one you get an introduction, as I say, to your chosen field of nursing. You, get a de you develop a wider knowledge of health and social care generally. In year two you will develop field-specific competencies. You'll look at the importance of research and how it applies to practice. And in year three we start preparing you now for your first profession professional role and preparing you to become an auto autonomous practitioner. 
Midwifery is slightly different in that year one, obviously this is geared now towards deliver, uh, looking after women who are pregnant and delivering healthy, safe babies. So you will be looking at normal pregnancy in year one. You'll look at childbirth, neonatal care, interprofessional working and professional development. In year two, you will look at pregnancy again, childbirth, neonate with complications, gynaecology and theatre work. And in year three, it's about consolidating all, that, all of that knowledge and again, helping you to start progressing now towards becoming an autonomous registered midwife. Practice placements, central to any pre-registration nursing or midwif midwifery course that you do, will be the practice experience that you get. And as a result of that, all universities will ensure that you get a wide variety of experience out in a clinical area. So you could find that you are working in hospitals, in community settings, GP surgeries, walk-in clinics, um, nursing homes, nurseries, basically wherever patients are being being cared for we will always try and give you the opportunity to try and look at how care is delivered in that setting and how it might differ from maybe an acute setting okay so how's the course funded all pre-registration nursing and midwifery ODP and paramedic courses are funded by the NHS okay so this is a publicly funded program of study so we want the very best candidates coming in you can get more information about you know, what you would be entitled to personally if you go on to the NHS Student Grants Unit. You can, um, in, you can go into Google and just type in Student Grants and then follow all the NHS icons. You can type in your own details and it will give you a rough guide to the kind of uh, finance, financial support that you would be entitled to. Entry requirements, okay, there are no upper age limits for coming onto these programmes. The oldest student we had was 57 when she started and 60 when she finished. Fantastic, okay. I do remember at the time though saying to her, are you mad? And she said, no Alex. You know what? She said, I have worked as a healthcare assistant all my life. I've brought my children up. I've sent them off to university. I've never had the opportunity myself. And now is my time. And she completed the course and she's worked for five years in the community and given back all of that um, fabulous knowledge that she's just gained. And she was a real star. So you will find as a student on a health related program that you may be the youngest, but you may also be the oldest. The, the age range is huge, but that's great because everybody brings something completely different to the programme and you all learn from each other. You have to have a minimum of three years settled resi residency in the UK and you have to demonstrate that you've been um, in study for the last three years. Any offer of a place on a pre-registration programme is subject to occupational health clearance and DBS clearances. Now, DBS is Disclosure Barring Service, okay? So we run a, um, a criminal record check on every single candidate who comes into a pre-registration programme. The nature of the programme of study that you're coming into means that you will come into contact with some of the most vulnerable people that there are in society and we have a duty to care for them. If you've felt the long arm of the law on your shoulder in the past, please don't be put off applying, okay? What we will always do is look at people on an individual basis. There are some things that would preclude you from coming onto the course. Murder is definitely one of them. But in the main, we will look at everybody individually. What I would say to you, though, is be open and honest and upfront. If you feel that there is something that might come up on a criminal record check that you have done in the dim distant past, then declare it at the application stage. Make sure you bring a statement along to the interview. It doesn't necessarily mean that you will not get onto the course. But I can assure you, if you don't declare it and something later comes up on your CRB, then you will be off the programme quicker than you got here. And that's because it looks like you've tried to hide something and it looks like you are dishonest. We really do not want dishonest people in healthcare. Okay, entry requirements. 
Um, all universities will set their own entry, entry requirements, but as a guide, and this is a guide, and in the main I've seen that most people are asking for similar. So for nursing, what we are looking for are five GCSEs, grade C and above, you must have maths and you must have English. If you don't hold a maths or English GCSE, we will accept a certificated level two qualification in either literacy or numeracy. We are also looking for 280 UCAS points and we want a minimum of two A levels at grades B, B. We are not stipulating for a science subject. We are saying relevant science, natural or applied science subjects are preferred, but they are not essential. If it's the integrated awards that you are interested in, they are looking at 300 UCAS points and three A levels at grades B, B, C. We will accept the BTEC um, Extended Diploma, we will accept the BTEC National Award and we will accept, accept the BTEC Diploma Award. We will also accept a QAA Access Recognised um, Nursing and Midwifery course that you may have done. Just please remember that you know, whichever qualification you're coming in with, we still expect to have a GCSE Maths and English or level two, certificated level two numeracy and literacy award as well. Okay. For midwifery, we are looking for five GCSEs, grade C and above, again to include maths and English, preferably a biology subject as well, or some form of science subject, and 300 UCAS points. Midwifery are asking for three A levels at grade B, B, B try and to undertake some paid or voluntary work in a healthcare setting. That is really important because I think it helps you to decide whether or not this is definitely a career for you. And be very clear about which area of either nursing or if it's definitely midwifery that you want to study. Take the time to complete your application form properly, okay? All universities have to interview for pre-registration nursing programmes. So again, make sure that you read the information that comes out to you to tell you what to bring to the interview. If it asks you to bring a passport, please bring your passport. And remember that ma the majority of interviews now also include a maths and a written paper. Um, as part of the interview selection process. It's not rocket, uh, rocket science maths, I promise you. There's no algebra in there. It's the fundamentals of maths, so the basic, adding, subtraction, fractions, moving decimal points. Remember, you can kill somebody if you don't know how to move the decimal point properly, okay? So we're just testing that. If you haven't looked at maths for a while, go back and revisit some of those math skills. Expect to be asked questions about what you've written about yourself in your personal statement. And remember that interviews are a two-way process. This is about you as well finding out as much as you can about the, the, the university that you've applied to.